So in this video here, I continue on the road of adding 64K internally to the system. This one, this is prior to me getting a really good solder remover. So instead I did it the hard way. It's messy. Interesting, but messy. All right, so I need to remove the memory chips from the system. This is the one I added the expansion to, and I somehow I burnt something out. I think I just destroyed a chip. So I'm removing them. I'm going to put, replace them with sockets. I started with the soldering gun and trying to remove the solder with the solder sucker. But I figured that's going to take forever. So I realized I can just take my Dremel. I can cut the chips off and then leave the little legs here. And then I can come back in and pull the legs out with the soldering gun. So I'm just going to remove one chip on camera here just so you can see. How it works and I'm wearing my mask because this thing puts out a lot of dust what I'm doing is I'm going right on top of the legs just to separate them without getting close to the board As I zoom in, I'll just to show you close up. You can see I'm not touching the board, not getting near it. That's one side done. Now go to the other side and do the same over here. Again, I'm using the chip as my guide. I'm not freehanding it. I'm not putting any pressure on it. Like it. So you notice I'm holding the two hands. And there we go. Move the chip out. See how I cleaned it right off nice and clean? Legs are still there, didn't touch the trace. Now I just gotta do six more just like it. All right, I got these three left here. I don't wanna take a chance on damaging the socket. I already nicked it there and there. So I got them to the end here. I'm just gonna use a little nail cuticle cutter thingies. I'm just gonna get down in here and see if I can just snip it out. Yeah, I got one out. tight spot right here to get into. I could just pull it, but I don't want to rip the trace or anything. And I do want to use this soldering iron to loosen up the solder that's holding these legs that are left in there. So get done it. Alright, got that one. Last one. That one. This one's a little easier to get to, I think. Yep, there we go. Alright, I got them all removed down now. I need to clean this mess up and then start pulling out the legs. Now what I need to do is I need to remove the pins. And to do that, I gotta heat up the back and pull the pin out. So I came up with this real quick and dirty way of holding it together. Big old six inch clamp here and a two inch clamp there. It's nice and heavy. Gonna work out good. Yeah. Adjust it just slightly so it doesn't have any rock because that's just the way it would work. There. So now I'm gonna remove the pins. And again, I'm not gonna film all of this. Eh. I want to film putting it back together, making it work. But you can see what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take the soldering iron. I'm gonna apply it to this side of the pin over here. Let me just to this side of the pin over here. I'm going to take the tweezers on this side and pull the pin out. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to do every one of them. 
16 times 8, what's that? 80, 128 times. Yeah, you don't want to watch all that. But it's going to get done. Okay. One down, seven to go. And then I'm going to go back and clean the holes afterwards. The reason I stopped is, and I'm going to show a picture of it. I'll put it over here on the side somewhere. As I'm bent down here desoldering, a black widow dropped down in front of me and just sat there about that far from my face. Yeah, almost had to change my pants there. Suffice it to say, that black widow's dead. That's the second one I've seen in the past week. They must be coming in because of the cold. Anywho, I'm going to do one of them on camera right now. Just so you can see. Ow. Mm, watch your finger. Just so you can see how I'm doing it. What I am doing is, and it's, it's, it's going to be hard to see, but what I'm doing is I'm taking these cuticle cutters, which work great. Now take this, the soldering iron, and I put it up against the pin I want to remove. Well, first off, I take my cuticle cutter, I get a grip on the pin. And of course, the one I want to show is going to be hard to get. I take a grip on the pin. Then I take the soldering iron and I just place it on the pin on this side to heat it up and pull it out. I'm doing that each one, then I'll go back with the solder sucker and I'll clean the holes out. This way I'm being very gentle and I'm not hurting any of the traces. I'm not fighting it. It's working out pretty good. So, back to pulling them out. All right, something I was hoping wouldn't happen did happen. I lifted a trace. Luckily, if you can call it luck, the trace is. Let me find something I can point with. Tweezers. Right there, and it goes over to right there. So it connects two chips together. So I'm going to have to just run a bodge wire in there along the back to connect them. It doesn't look like it goes any further either. This is where it ended. Fascinating. So that was the last spot on that trace. And i got to be careful of this one here and that one there too. So there, there's an issue right there. Now, I wonder if that's why the memory expansion wasn't working because I had a broken trace down below. You never know. But yeah, i got to be careful doing those things. I, do, I didn't yank on it. I just heated it up like normal and just pulled and it. Just, pfft, up comes the whole trace. So, solder on or desolder on. All right, another one. Now I'm starting to see the quality and the craftsmanship of the Clico Atom. I, I love this computer, don't get me wrong. But another one. Nothing's holding that trace there. It just lifted right up. See that? I'll be repairing some of these, it looks like. Now, the nice thing is, again, I can just repair them from the back, cross them over. I just got to remember where each one goes. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun putting this one back together, but I'll remember it. The nice thing is I'm putting sockets in, so I can just bridge across the sockets to the bad traces. But, yeah, see that? That's right there. That's not a good thing. That's not fun. You're not supposed to do that. Not supposed to do that at all, and I, as I said, I am not putting a lot of pressure on these things at all. So we must have some weak traces. Let me snip this trace, let me snip that off there. Weak traces. I mean, actually, look, I will desolder one live right on the camera here so you can just see that I am not putting a lot of pressure on these things. What I do is I just take and I hook this on here like that. That's it, just hanging on to it. And these have oh, turn it. Yeah, like that. So you can see now I got the cuticle cutter right there. And then I just put a little bit of heat on this side to soften up the solder. And rock it out. And that one slipped off on me. Like I said, I get a grip on it right there. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not yanking it. Heat up the solder. Just pull it. And look at another trace right there. So I must have some bad ones over here. So this is going to need a lot of rework over here. So I'm going to be careful. This is probably this is probably why my memory expansion failed because I had some broken traces over here. 
So I will continue on and I will rebuild this. The nice thing is I can always just repair it from the back end. See, look at that. See? That's not a lot of pressure at all. But some of these other traces on the other side are bad. We shall see what we can do. But we're going to save it. Alright, to remove the solder. What I'm doing is I put the tip in the hole on this side here. And then, get my solder sucker ready, put the tip in the hole on this side here and suck it out that side. Heat it up, suck it out. It's working very well. As long as I get the right hole, there we go. One thing I may have an issue is when I come to some of these that have a lot of solder on them, then I gotta do it a couple times to get it out. I think it's working out pretty good. All right, so I am finally done removing all of the wires. Ended up with a few bad traces breaking up in here and already being broken, which may be why my memory expansion didn't work. And again, on the backs, I had one break again, same chip. So I can fix them. This is a matter of just find out where they connected to and just reconnect them. I'll look at another board, give me an idea where it goes. Just want to show you a little trick after I removed them. And I got, I got to like, if you're going to do any kind of computer work, repairing or replacing parts, you need a solder sucker. Don't get that wick. This stuff here, solder wick, useless as shit. Now, this is what I, I got a little dollar store laser light, the extras from the cats, they use it up on me. But it lets me see, if I can find the button, you can see, see how you can see through the holes. And by using that, I can make sure I got every hole cleaned out. Now, once my sockets get in, I'll install the sockets in here. Well, I'm going to take this home and I'm going to clean it up nicely, really scrub it good. And then once the sockets get in, I'll solder the sockets in, I'll repair those, replace, replace those broken traces. And then we'll put some chips in it and see if she works. Okay, so somewhere along the way I lost the footage of me actually soldering the sockets in. As you saw in the last time I removed, I ground out the chips. I cleaned it all up really good and I soldered them back in. I soldered the sockets in. I had to repair some broken traces. So I just used some bodge wire to reconnect them to rebuild those few traces that got broken there. So now we're going to give it a shot and put some miracle memory back in it and see if she works. If she works, then we're going to go back to trying to put an expanded memory in it. Wish me luck. I went through the process of reorganizing my office a lot during February Adam when I was pushing out a video or two every day. So I've lost some more footage. This is the footage of me actually testing what I just showed you there. Suffice it to say it didn't work. There is something wrong with that board. Even when I just put regular memory chips in it didn't work. So something else died when I first did the piggybacking on the previous video. So I, in turn, took another atom board. I have a lot of them sitting here. And I removed the chips. And I didn't video this because I didn't know if it was going to work. But I removed the chips. And this time I didn't do the Dremel. I just used this. I bought another solder sucker. This was a solder sucker combination soldering iron. So it was a little easier. And I removed the chips. It didn't lift the trace anywhere. Put sockets in, soldered them in, and I went step by step. I put the sockets in, I put the original memory chips back in, tested to make sure they worked, they worked. I put in the new memory chips in, make sure they worked, they worked. I piggybacked brand memory and put them in the sockets, make sure they worked, they worked. Added the wiring just so I can access the second bank, make sure it worked, it worked. And I have another video of that memory expansion, which obviously you probably saw, but I'm going to include that in here so you can see what the finished product was going to look like on this board that died.
And like I said, I think I may have blown a capacitor. Something may have fried somewhere along the way. I'm good. It's sitting in my box. It's one of those ones where I want to figure out what happened to it. So I'm going to remove all. I'm going to remove a capacitor one at a time until I can make it work. But here, this is what the finished product looks like, and it does work. So this is my atom that I modified. I piggybacked RAM on it. Brought the 64K expansion line over. And I added a little jumper that I can remove when the case is closed so I can still plug in an expansion RAM. I added another 64K to this computer on the motherboard. The jumper triggers this or enables the internal 64K expansion. So this computer here has 128K in it. I don't need this expansion card to play out of the bottom. But the jumper lets me turn it off in case I want to use the expansion card. 